In 2025, one of the fastest growing and most in-demand roles in cybersecurity is cloud security engineering. But how do you actually become one, especially if you're starting from scratch? In this video, I'll give you a step-by-step -step roadmap to become a cloud security engineer without needing a college degree or prior tech experience. If you're new here, I'm Day, a cybersecurity engineer at Amazon with five years in cybersecurity. My experience covers detection engineering, cloud security, incident response, threat hunting, and most recently, some threat intelligence. Before Amazon, I worked at Datadog as a cloud threat detection engineer where I researched cloud threats and builds detections for various cloud providers and SaaS applications. I've also worked my way up from SOC analyst roles, investigating everything from endpoint threats to cloud-based abuse, so I know exactly what it takes to break into this field and move around. I started just like many of you, learning from scratch, asking questions, and figuring it out one step at a time. And now, I'm here to help you do the same. Also, if you want to stay up to date on the cybersecurity industry and everything technical and career related, be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. Also check out the links below for resources, including our Discord community and newsletter. Now let's dive into the video by first understanding what cloud security engineers actually do. Let's start with the most important question here. What exactly is cloud security engineering? Many people imagine it's just monitoring dashboards or reviewing alerts and adjusting IAM permissions, but the reality is it's far more complex and deeply technical. So a cloud security engineer builds and protects the systems, identities, data, and infrastructure that power cloud environments like Amazon Web Services, AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. The role involves designing secure architecture in the cloud, detecting cloud service abuse, automating response to cloud misconfigurations, and investigating breaches through cloud log analysis and several other possibilities based on the company or the description of the role. This position uniquely typically blends some software engineering, DevOps, and cybersecurity skills. Unlike a SOC analyst who mainly analyzes threats, as a cloud security engineer, you might be expected to build security guardrails or write scripts or deploy infrastructure and prevent security incidents by fixing or remediating cloud misconfigurations, which are one of the leading causes of cloud attacks. If you're expecting a simple checklist job, then you might want to think again because cloud security engineering demands critical thinking, curiosity, and a true engineer's mindset. Now, before diving into the tools or certifications, you must first understand how the cloud system that you want to secure actually works. You can secure what you don't understand, and cloud infrastructure is truly a world of its own. What this means is learning and understanding how identity works in cloud platforms, how users or services and roles authenticate and what they can access within a cloud environment. You need to understand how resources like virtual machines, storage buckets, and containers are deployed and managed. You must also grasp how cloud networks are segmented, how logs are generated, and what telemetry is available for detecting suspicious behaviors across different cloud planes, specifically the control plane or the management plane and the data plane. And all of this goes beyond memorizing cloud or technical terminology. It's truly about developing a deep understanding of how cloud environments are built and how data flows through them. When something breaks or worse, when someone breaks in to your cloud environment, you need to recognize the signs and distinguish between normal, risky, and malicious behavior. Starting with AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud, it doesn't matter at first. What's important is choosing one platform and committing to learn it from the ground up. After you start to understand how the cloud services are structured, the next piece of the puzzle is networking, cloud networking specifically. This is one of the skills I strongly advocate cybersecurity professionals to learn early on, specifically computer networking. And while many people tend to skip ahead or zone out here, trust me, you wouldn't want to skip this. Computer networking is the lifeblood of everything in security, especially in the cloud. Without it, you'll be flying blind with regards to your technical skills, at least for the fundamentals. You need to understand how devices communicate with each other over the internet, and then more so for the cloud if you're gonna be a cloud security engineer. This includes concepts like IP addressing, subnets, and network address translation, amongst many other things. You also wanna be comfortable with how public and private networks work in a cloud context, and how traffic is routed between services and 
across regions, especially if your infrastructure is deployed globally. You also need to understand protocols because when an attacker is probing your cloud environment, they often use protocols like HTTP, SSH, or DNS in abnormal ways. If you can't recognize what normal looks like, you'll never be able to spot the subtle signs of an intrusion or ongoing attack in your cloud environment. But beyond detection and investigation, networking also helps you build better and secure cloud architecture. It helps you understand how to best segment services in regions or VPCs to reduce your blast radius and design environments that are harder to exploit and move through laterally if an attacker is ever able to get in. So you won't want to rush this step because it will pay off over and over again in your career. I've made multiple videos on computer networking, so I'm not going to go too deep into this, but just know how important it is. Once you've started to grasp cloud infrastructure and networking, you might be tempted to jump right into learning tools like Seams or EDRs or CSVMs for cloud environments. While these tools are important, they're not where you should start. Why? Because every security tool relies on the underlying telemetry and the behavior of the system that it monitors. Without understanding how a system actually works, knowing which buttons on a tool to click wouldn't really help you. You won't really recognize architectural problems or spot anomalies or even build meaningful detections or really know what to mitigate or remediate in your cloud environment. When I started working on cloud detections professionally, I encountered a cloud provider I had no experience with. But within a few months, I was able to transfer from a novice in this cloud platform to writing multiple detections, supporting customers during a large scale cloud incident and presenting my research on company blogs and at major cybersecurity conferences. The takeaway here is simple. Master the system, or in this case, the cloud environment first and always once you do, every tool you learn afterwards will click into place much easier. Now that you've built a strong foundation in how the cloud systems and networks operate, you're ready to start exploring the tools that cloud security engineers actually use on the job. But I want you to approach this with intention and not impulse or guess. Here's the thing, security tools are there to just extend your understanding, not completely replace it. So whether it's a log analysis platform, a threat detection engine, or a cloud native monitoring service, these tools help you find, investigate, and respond to threats. But they're only as powerful as your understanding of what you're looking at. So instead of trying to learn every tool out there, focus on learning how to think like a cloud defender, understand what telemetry is available, learn how to follow the trail of an attacker moving through a cloud account, practice reading logs or correlating events and writing detection logic that isn't just copy pasted from some out of the box rules from your SIM or from a playbook that someone else already wrote. Being able to practice this is exactly what makes TriHackMe's new Defending Azure learning path so valuable. Rather than just covering surface level cloud concepts, it builds crucial foundational knowledge while providing hands-on experience in real Azure cloud environments. What this learning path does is it takes you on a deep dive into Microsoft Azure security where you get hands-on experience with Microsoft Sentinel and Defender, allowing you to build threat detection, instant response, and vulnerability management skills. With the carefully designed practical labs, challenges, and exercises backed by theory, you'll learn to protect Azure environments from diverse attack vectors, all while sharpening your skills in both defense and security assessment for this cloud environment. And by the end, you have a solid grasp of Azure security best practices and the essential tools for securing modern cloud environments. You will learn how to identify suspicious activity in Azure, investigate security incidents, and implement proper security controls all in a safe, guided environment. I also like the fact that the Microsoft Sentinel section helps you build cloud native SIEM engineering experience by teaching you how Sentinel is deployed how data is ingested into it, and how to build detections and investigate threats with it. Auxiliary skills like SEM engineering and detection engineering can significantly boost your abilities as a cloud security engineer. And I say this because this was a huge portion of my role as a cloud threat detection engineer at Datadog. The learning path ends with two Azure security challenges, one for cloud pen testers that requires you to find the attack path and escalate to global admin, and another one for cloud defenders that challenges you to use Microsoft Sentinel for incident investigation and threat hunting. This allows you to build well-rounded offense and defense skills in Azure. The best part is you can try it right now by clicking the link in the description to get started. And a huge thank you to TriAcme for sponsoring this portion of today's video and making this content possible. Their support helps me continue creating educational content that helps people break into cybersecurity.
security. So remember, especially as you may be going through this learning path on TryHackMe, make sure to focus on understanding the why behind each security control tool and detection method. Tools are important, but they're only effective when paired with a cloud security engineering mindset deep contextual understanding, strong problem solving skills, and sharp analytical reasoning. And continuing on this topic, let's talk about how real world practice separates theory from skill. You see, reading articles and watching videos like this can provide knowledge, but knowledge alone doesn't build confidence in your skill set. That's exactly why hands-on experience is essential if you want to become a cloud security engineer. You need to simulate real-world scenarios, and this might involve setting up a mock cloud environment, deliberately misconfiguring it, and then detecting and fixing those issues. Or it could mean working through labs where you analyze logs, triage alerts, and respond to simulated attacks. Again, TriAcme's learning platform is perfect for precisely this kind of progression. The Defendant Azure Learning Path will walk you through deploying, breaking, and defending systems in a safe environment. The key is not to just study cloud security, but to do cloud security and get your hands dirty. In the cloud, things move fast. And if you try to secure everything manually, you're definitely bound to fall behind. That's why automation isn't just a nice to have skill, it's a requirement. If you want to scale your impact, reduce noise, and respond to threats efficiently, you need to learn how to write code. Python is a fantastic starting point. It's easy to learn, widely used in security, and perfect for tasks like parsing logs, querying APIs, automating responses, writing detection logic, and several other things that are super efficient for cloud environments. And once you've built a foundation in Python, you can expand it to scripting languages like Bash or PowerShell, depending on your environment, or Go, depending on how your infrastructure is configured. But the important thing is to start writing code that solves real-world problems. This could be anything from a cloud function to a remediation workflow that disables misconfigured users or a bash script on a virtual machine to install specific tooling on deployment. Remember, you're not trying to be a software developer. You're building tools that make you a more effective security engineer. And this also ties very much into infrastructure as code. One of the biggest shifts in modern cloud environments is the move to infrastructure as code. Instead of clicking buttons in a web console, engineers are deploying resources using declarative templates and script. And that has huge implications for security. If you understand how infrastructure as code works, you can detect misconfigurations before they actually go live. You actually get to review changes in source control and build security guardrails into development workflows. And you can make sure that security isn't just something that happens after deployment, it's baked in from the start. You don't need to master every infrastructure as code tool out there, but you should be comfortable reading, reviewing, and writing templates for the cloud environments you wanna work in. All of this learning, cloud networking, systems, scripting, needs to be tangible. And that's why projects are so important. If you can build a small cloud environment, configure it securely, simulate an attack, and then detect and respond to that attack, you're almost job ready. If you can automate policy enforcement or build dashboards highlighting risky behavior, you're also almost job ready. Your projects don't really need to be flashy, they just need to be real. They need to demonstrate that you understand how to think, investigate, and solve cloud security problems for the business. And they need to be documented as well on your GitHub, in your portfolio, or on your resume. Because when you start applying for jobs, these projects are what set you apart from everyone else who has a certificate or certification and a list of buzzwords. All right, so cloud security is not a static field just like anything in cybersecurity or any field of cybersecurity, it changes every single day. New services are launched, old ones get deprecated, attackers find new weaknesses, teams build new defenses. It's just simply ever evolving. So your job as a cloud security engineer is to evolve with the space. That means reading blogs or newsletters, reviewing vendor change logs, joining security communities, and practicing regularly. All of this, to be done, not out of fear, but out of a commitment to being excellent at your craft. This is a career, not just 
a class or a certification you just passed. And the more you treat it like a long-term journey, the more you get out of it. And even more so, if you want to join a growing community of learners and professionals, check out Cyborgs Academy, which is our Discord community linked below. We've got over 6,000 members supporting each other on their cybersecurity journey every day. And if you found this video valuable, consider subscribing and checking out these next videos on the screen where I break down how to get into cybersecurity in 2025 with the one on the left being more specific to cybersecurity engineering. I'll see you over there.